And now a Fox News alert. Americans will finally get their first real look into the Democrats' impeachment inquiry next week. House Intel Chair Adam Schiff announcing three key witnesses will testify in public hearings. This, as newly unearthed tweets, show one of the attorneys for the whistleblower has been pushing for impeachment for years. A senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakovsky, joins me now to break it all down for us. Thank you so much for joining us, Hans. We always appreciate it. Sure thing, Heather. So as we begin, let's take a look at the schedule we know so far of these open impeachment hearings. We have Wednesday, right. November 13th, William Taylor, George Kent, and then Friday, Marie Yovanovitch. Uh, can you tell us first the significance of these folks and why in this order? That's what I was wondering. Well, these are all diplomats who apparently have complained about the way the president was conducting uh, his diplomatic relations with uh, the Ukraine and uh, Yovanovitch, the last one, you know, she complained about the fact that she was fired. Well, I hate to tell these diplomats this, but it's the president, not the State Department, that sets our foreign policy. And the fact that they may disagree with the way he's conducted foreign policy, that is not an impeachable offense. Under the Constitution, it's the president mm -hmm. who has complete authority over foreign policy, not these diplomats. And as for the uh, the, the ambassador complaining about the fact that she was fired. Ambassadors under the Constitution serve at the pleasure of the president, and they can be fired for no reason or any reason. Again, no impeachable offense here. Yeah, so when it comes to witnesses and the order of the witnesses, I mean, are we, are we going to hear from everyone, including those who, who back up the president and his team that says there was no quid pro quo? No, it doesn't sound like it. In fact, uh, it, it, it seems as if Adam Schiff is setting this up, uh, frankly, reminiscent of the kind of show trials that the, sh the Soviet Union ran in the 1930s. Look, we have not had adequate disclosure yet. Uh, we still don't know uh, and haven't seen the transcripts of all the witnesses questioned mm -hmm. in secret. Uh, the Republicans have not been given the ability to completely cross-examine all of those witnesses. There's been no disclosure by Schiff of all his prior contacts with these witnesses and or the whistleblower. And most importantly, we still don't know uh, who the whistleblower is, which is very important to his credibility. That is a key issue here, and that still has not been disclosed. You know, something we do know, uh, and this started to be leaked or yeah. released yesterday on Twitter, one of the whistleblower's attorneys actually has been calling for this coup uh, for years, going back to 2017 at least, and we can bring up some of those tweets so people can see right there. One, uh, which we had earlier, hashtag coup has started. As one falls, two more will take their place. Rebellion, impeachment, then another uh, says it's very scary. We will get rid of him and this country is strong enough to survive even him and his supporters. Uh, we have to. And then the last one says MAGA get rid of at real Donald Trump. So what does that show you? Boy, that is really shocking and frankly appalling. You know, here the lawyer for this uh, supposed whistleblower was talking about a coup a coup d'etat in the United States, something that's never happened in our, our entire history. And again, this raises substantial questions about the credibility of, of not just this supposed whistleblower, but the entire process, because clearly his lawyer two years ago was involved in trying to plan uh, mm -hmm. getting rid of the duly elected president of the United States. That yeah. is just shocking. Hans, why some legislators have called for his name to be released. Why haven't they just released it? Well, I don't understand why they haven't. Uh, as you probably know, legislators, when they're, when they're on the floor of the House or the floor of the Senate, are covered by the Constitution, uh, the Speech and Debate Clause, and they can do it. Frankly, if I was a member of Congress, I would do it because it's essential to uh, a real investigation of what's going on here. Yeah, Hans, I knew that you would know the answer to that. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you joining us as always. Uh, looking forward to next week. Yep, thanks All for right. having me. Bye-bye.